<laughs> Hi, welcome. Welcome. It's Roy and Val. We're, we're here to show you some circle cutters. So, um, so we, we have, have a, some. Yeah, we have, we have a few cutters. of them yeah. on the yeah. table that I we know. wanted to show you. These are just a few that we saw. We didn't we we didn't bring all of them because we figured it was just too many to show. To be honest, so we just grabbed some of the ones that we use around here a lot of times. Uh, I think we were going to start with the Circle Pro. Right, this one. Yeah, we're gonna, this was made by Creators. If you're not familiar with Creators, they come up with a lot of different uh, tools for the making cutting glass in particular easier. Uh, this particular one, Studio Pro 12. So it's uh, the 12 part means you could do a 12 inch circle in here. It works on a grid surface. You can see how it kind of sits into Does the grid this come surface. With it? Yeah, if you buy the the package, the kit, it comes with exactly what you see here, which is the the circle cutter, this um, waffle grid, grid yeah. um, piece, and it comes with these um, really nice. They're called something. Friction buttons. Friction buttons. Is that what they're called? Um, yeah, I think that's what they're called. We think they're called friction buttons. And what are they? What is, is that <clears throat> like a non-slip thing? Yeah, basically it's a really yeah. Sometimes when you're working cutting on this, if you anyone there has worked on waffle grids before, you know sometimes they're a little slippery when you have the glass on there. So the friction buttons are just to help hold the glass in place, which comes in handy here, right? Because as you're doing the circle, you don't want the glass sliding on you. Mm -hmm. So um, right. the friction buttons come in real handy. And I think it actually comes with eight buttons, but for some reason. I only have four. I don't, I don't know what happened to the other four, but you'll see how it works. Works okay. pretty well, right? So I have this 12-inch piece of glass I'm going to score and cut it out. So, so it would appear that it would be difficult, to, but we figured out how you get that yeah, piece so of this glass one, in there. Yeah, so this, as again, the, the legs here lock into the grid surface, uh, so you can see how it just locks right in there. So you don't have to worry about this whole thing you know, sliding on the, on the waffle surface anyways. Uh, but now I can't get the glass in there, so I'm going to open up the pop up the back two One pieces end. here and then slide the glass in. So I, I know I can tell you that when we first looked at this, we're like, well, the glass is too big for the, it'll never fit in there. But if it fits like this, right? So you turn that 45 degrees uh, to compared to what the waffle is. And um, so you can get it in there. Uh, again, like once you get it in place, like I said, you apply a little bit of pressure and it catches these um, friction buttons and, um, Makes it no skin. Yeah, it makes it so it doesn't slide around too much. So the cutting head is here. It might be hard to see. I'm not sh sure how well you can see that. But the cutting head's here. And so the recommendation is this little yellow knob. If you loosen this up, then the cutting the cutter head will will hit the glass. And then, which I already, I, I did it yesterday. So sorry. So it's already done that. But um, So you want the cutting head just resting on the glass. And when you do, then you tighten it. And then that's going to hold the, the cutting head in place. So you can adjust it for different thicknesses of glass, which I think comes in handy. And then so uh, ideally then it's going to be like at the right height. So when you, you don't have to apply a ton of pressure to get the score, you can, you know, just do a normal kind of um, pressure. The uh, where you adjust the uh, diameter here is, is there's a little knob here in the back. And so you just loosen this up and you can slide this around. So here I'm going to do a 10 inch circle, right? So I can uh, tighten that up. Um, usually we recommend that I, I do anyways, like you, you should leave at least an inch around the circle that you're cutting. If you want to break it out easily, uh, that's yeah, sure. right. I mean, at least an inch around the outside. So I have a 12 inch square piece of glass. So I'm doing a, a 10 inch circle is how that kind of works. Um, I didn't actually look to see where the center of the board was or the center of the piece of glass was. I could have probably figured that out. But instead, if you, what I like to do is just this real quick. I'm not scoring at the moment. I am really just running the cutter around the glass because I want to make sure that I'm you know, not too close to an edge. I want to make sure I don't have something in my workstation that this not, is yeah. going to bump on, right? I, yeah. Kay, to answer your question, and we've got a question of where yeah. we can buy this cutter. All of wow. the cutters that we're going to show you today are on our website. Just, yeah, what a weird coincidence. It just happened so we that just happened to sell most them. of the stuff... Who'd have thought, you can buy right? from us. I know it's like a big long infomercial. We apologize <laughs> for that part of it. But so um, I like to start like if, if like I'm looking at a clock face for me, right? Where you know six is down here and noon's uh, twelve is up here. I like to start with the cutter at around seven. I, I don't know why. I just find it easier because I'm out. What you want to try to do is one continuous motion. You don't want to score and then stop and then you know refigure out your hands right. and then do so it's it, kind of right? nice so. to start back a little bit and yeah. then you can freely <clears throat> exactly right. and i think maybe because i'm right-handed i like it on that side to start from i'm not sure but yeah anyways. i do the same thing. the same way okay so now i'm gonna score it okay. 
right? So pretty, pretty nice. easy there, yeah. right? And it does hold it in place. That, that, that works pretty yeah, good. Yeah, this looks pretty nice. So um, I don't know how well you can see that. I personally happen to have a really light score, I think, most of the time. I, I score pretty lightly. But yeah, you can kind of see it, see it here. Um, now what I'm going to do is break it out. And so sometimes that's always a tricky part. I know for people it's like, you know, what's the... What's the best way to break it out? I, I'm, I'm sure if you've looked at other well, videos, you've probably seen people. I think this is part of people. the circle cutter deal is that, you know, the idea, I think, is, is much more desirable than the actual act. I mean, it's not as easy as people think it is. Like, okay, this will score your perfect oh, circle. Yeah, I agree. But, you know, that's only part of the battle. The, bat the other battle is cracking it and getting it out of there. So, right. um, so that's one of the things we've talked about. Circle cutters can be so helpful if you're cutting a lot of circles, but I mean, it's still not like magic, you know, yeah. there's oh, still sure. a little yeah, process yeah. and a little bit to know about breaking them out. So yeah. that's kind of why we have a little bit of a routine here, how we do it. Yeah, so. we'll, we'll go show you how we do it around here. Yeah, as Val mentioned, I mean, yeah, scoring it is one just very small part of it, right? The other part is actually breaking it out and, and breaking it out cleanly might be a, another way of looking at it. So I scored this side of the glass, and I'm now going to flip it over. And I have uh, on the table here just some paper that we get between the sheets of glass here. Let me get um, this out. Yeah, and then the other thing that we have is we sell this thing called a scoring mat. Of course, I buried it here. Yeah, we got all of our circles on there. And uh, it's a rubber mat, which is going to do something very similar. Um, it just, yeah, provides yeah, a bit of a give, yeah, right? Yeah, we need something that's going to have a little give to it. That's why we've stacked some paper here to do that. And then again, the score is the score is on the bottom of this piece of glass, and I'm going to push on where the score is at, and I'm going to get it to break. Uh, Val and I find it easier if you break the circle before you start cutting into the glass to get to the circle, if that makes sense. Well, and tell them why, because that I've read directions that actually say um, once you've scored it, go ahead and relief cut up to it. And that would mean so we'd score yeah, we like score a corner or up, or up or and then crack it. But if that circle is not already broken out, it's just going to shoot right. The score yeah. is going to shoot right through your circle. So if you before you do your relief cuts to get it out of there, you've got to break it first, which is what he's getting yep. ready to do. He's yeah. got to crack it. Just crack it all the yep, way around. Yeah, just going to crack it around. So um, sometimes I use my thumb depending on the size of the piece. Uh, depends on how much I have here. But if I push a little bit here... Uh, sometimes we can get this to break. Sometimes uh, I have a hard time with my thumb. So in fact, what I usually often use is the running pliers. So um, I'll use the not back end. Not typically the way you use running pliers. Yeah, not the way. Yeah, normally you use these for breaking glass, right? Uh -huh. Well, we are going to break glass, yeah. but we're going to use the wrong end. So I just use the end here well, for a couple of reasons. One is it, it concentrate. One reason why my thumb doesn't always work is I, I don't have a lot of um, pressure in one point, right? I, that pressure I'm pushing on is across the width of my thumb. So this, all the pressure I'm pushing is in a more concentrated area. Um, the handle here is rubber coated, so it's protecting the tip right from the metal. So that's the other reason why I like using them. But I'm going to come in here and just push on this, I think. And there, there we, go. we go. So my issue is I always push too hard. So I, I'm all, what I was doing there was just pushing and gradually increasing the pressure until it broke, right? Instead of just going in and trying to manhandle that it. That show up pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So can you see yeah, it? Yeah, you can see it nice and okay. here. So now what we're going to do is at the end of the score, I'm just going to follow it around, right? So I'm just going to keep pushing it. You see here on the corners where there's more glass, it runs pretty easily. But once we get to here where it's it's a little thinner, um, thinner less glass there, it's, I have to push and apply a little more pressure. But again, you can see it running probably up into there. And sometimes from where I'm at, I can't really see it. Oh, yeah. Yep, there it is. is. And I'm just turning the glass just to make it easier for me so I can see what's going on. Am I close? Mm -hmm. There it is. And then if you listen closely... You hear that little pop, and that'll let you know that you you've met up where you started your score. And then again, so the glass here is the circle's broken out, right? I mean, it's totally broken as Val was pointing out. So um, you can't pull it out. Uh, it it's stuck in there because of the tension across the surface of the glass. But then we have to do some relief scores to break it out. And and I I do it a certain way. I'm not sure you if you do it the same way. I've seen it done probably you know. A hundred ways, but I don't uh, think you and I do it the same way. Yeah, I don't way. think we do it the same way. But I'm going to show you how I do it, and I'll explain why. Maybe you like that. So we're going to do some relief no, scores, probably. and um, so I'm going to come here and come to the outside of the circle. I come here and go to the outside of the circle. 
don't know if you can tell, I'm not actually scoring to the circle uh, because I was well, afraid that I yeah, might run yeah. my score over the circle. Um, then I'm going to flip it around, do the exact same thing on the opposite side. I know sometimes people come from corner to corner. Uh, not my favorite way of doing it, but um, but I'm doing like again what might be like a a tangent line, right? So you'll notice I'm not coming straight into the circle. I'm kind of coming off to the edge because my thinking is if if something goes wrong, that that's just going to break off mm -hmm. and and not break into the circle, right? So yeah, I mean that's my thinking. And then um, we're going to come in and break again. Now I'm going to use the running players like they were supposed to be used. Just give it a light little squeeze until it breaks. You'll see that it'll just break up to the circle. And since we uh, broke this out prior, the score shouldn't run through your circle at this point. It should just stop when it hits that, so that one comes off. Ta-da! There's the circle. There's Look the at circle. that set. But, yeah, but it's still a little bit of a process, right? I mean, it's, yeah. and I think the cracking it out is the most important thing that people in the beginning I can remember I was so confused because every time I would relief cut it would just break through my circle and then yeah. finally I realized that there's nothing to stop it you know it's going to keep running so unless it hits that already broken line yeah, so line, then it so. can't jump that yep. so and then you know I, I know that looks pretty easy I mean we uh, I, I picked a relatively smooth glass to do this yeah and, we're not um, stupid <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the size of the circle makes a huge difference, right? The bigger the circle, actually, the easier it is to break out. You know, when you start going smaller, they become more difficult. And so I think that might lead us to this next cutter, that, the, yeah, and I think that's, the lens cutter. Yeah, and that's true. That. There's the, one of the other things, so when you look for a, a, a circle cutter, right? So I guess, because we're going to talk about... Um, that one was really nice. I think that one's yeah. really nice. I've never really used it before. It's really um, nice. But then we have a couple others that we're very fond of. Um, and then, but what you want to also look for is some of them only will do certain size. You know, yep. like this one, you can't go any bigger than 12 inches. 12 inches, okay? Yeah, it'd be hard to do 12 inches even in that one, don't you think? I, I, yeah, I, I haven't tried a 12 inch one, but I. Um, and then this one, same thing. I don't, I think it adjusts down to five and a quarter but they say five inch i mean is what but the i don't think says, i was going to say i don't think i could secure it the more. measurement goes to oh, five does and it, a quarter, but... but i don't think i could secure it without um it being unstable so yeah so i think that five inches but i'm going to do like a four inch i think so you can just see they're just it, those they're fairly easy to set all of them have numbers on the side that indicate um that indicate inches right yep. And then a couple of the other ones we're going to show you actually have um, the millimeters or whatever on top too, right? So this one, before we go too far, is the easy cut lens cutter. Right. Yes. And I think that this one, obviously, if you can see, it, it doesn't have a very big arm. So we're saying probably five inches is as big as you can go. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that I know of who people use this or get it is for the little circles because some of these bigger ones, now you want to show that, oh, I guess you're going to hold oh, it. Oh, wow. I got, so I got to hold this. We have a visual aid. Yeah, we have visual aid. Look at that. So That's... did Stina make this? Yeah, Stina. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's really nice. But... Yeah, one of our instructors here at Delphi, uh, Stina Gott, made this piece. And you can see all the tiny little circles, right? So yeah, a whole so I'm lot not of sure. some of the glass panel. Some of the other standard one size circle cutters don't necessarily go that small, I don't think. No, a lot, yeah, they do not, actually. In fact, most of them won't go... Um, less than three inches. Usually, um, some of the other cutters we'll show you won't go smaller than three. So if you need anything below a three-inch circle, the lens cutter is probably really the way to go. Yeah, this one actually says cuts a half inch. Yeah, I know. I've never tried a half inch one. To five inches. That's that seems, what they recommend. Well, so, you know, one, yeah, one of the things I always, I often say about circle cutters is that, and as we've mentioned now a couple times, is it will certainly score a half inch circle. Uh, breaking it out, it's a, uh, a whole nother story. So sometimes, again, the smaller the circle you go, the more of a challenge it is to break it out cleanly. That doesn't mean you can't break it out, it just means it might not pop out as easily as I showed you that one mm -hmm. a um, couple minutes ago. Well, and that, yeah, that's true too. If you get a little, I mean, sometimes trying to be frugal with your glass or maybe your circle mm -hmm. that you want to cut and the piece you have available to use, maybe you do have to get half an inch to the edge or something. And, yeah. and all that usually means is it'll cr still crack, but it'll probably break there, meaning that, yeah. you know, it's such a thin um, portion there that when you go to crack the circle, 
it just snaps. So it's not the end of the world. It's just it didn't come out as cleanly as the one Roy did. But it's still, you can still do it. Yeah, you can still get a circle. Right. I mean, it's far easier still than trying to cut it by hand. So, so. this one is just like, like I said, it, it has this spring here. And it really is pretty straightforward. You just push down and then turn. And so the same thing as, um, I don't see any grips or anything on this one. No, no mat or anything. Mm. But um, I'm going to stand up. And so, same thing as Roy. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the glass just to make sure that. Um, so mirror it again. I just kind of do my my random so you can see I was off over here. So I'll just kind of center it. It's gonna be kind of thin. I guess I don't have a big enough piece. So should I go a little smaller? Let's go a little smaller. Just for, let's do a three. So one of the nice things about this particular um, cutter is that I don't know how well you can see the turret the cutting head here is a turret that has several cutting heads on it so you know as one cutting head wears out you just loosen this knob rotate that over and you have another cutting head yeah so you have wheel, like three you know, lives on, on this one yeah i think that one's got three yeah so which is nice so there we go so that should be a little a little better so like i said once you get it positioned i'm just gonna push down and then So once again, it's maybe a little hard, but it's it's a little. I, this is new, so I yeah. think it would loosen up after you kind of do it. Yeah, and every you gotta get used to every one. I mean, they're all they all uh, you know like any kind of cutter, they don't always require right. the same amount of pressure. You have to sort of get used to them. Right, and if if you know if this were truly something I'm using, I, I wouldn't yeah. try to break it out until I got this excess off. So one thing that does is it it saves your bigger piece, right? In case yeah. this runs and goes crazy, then you're kind of being a little more frugal with your bigger pieces. But, but you know, I could probably do it like this, but still you could take off the excess if you wanted to. And then we would do this the same way, turn it over and, mm -hmm. and break it out. But the other thing I wanted to actually point out, too, is that, you know, if I decided... To that, like I couldn't get it to break this way, which sometimes it happens, yep. you know, where you can't get enough pressure. You know, if you get once again, if you just get a little bit close to this, like we were showing you, you we were using the running pliers this way, you could still use them this way if you wanted to. You know, did you hear it crack? Yep. I mean, you could still, you know, work it a little bit that way. I can, can you see how it's cracked mm -hmm. from here to here? So sometimes I think if that helps you get started. And then maybe go from there. But the other thing, too, that I wanted to point out was, um, you know, you just have to sometimes see this one's tight and it's not really. But sometimes you just got to break them out however, however you can do it. See, there you go. I don't know. Can you see it going? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty good. But yeah, and this also, I mean, we used to use our thumbs all the time. And man, it make your, see, so there, like I said, there's not a lot of glass there. So sometimes that happens, but you know what? It's not really the end of the world. It's, you know, just going to leave a little. So, yeah. So then, I mean, like I said, I think I'm, I don't think I'm really cracked right there, but I think I can. Um, and I'm not sure, did we make it clear that, when we do this method, we're always on the opposite side that we score. Cause I, no, I think I said that the first okay. time, but yeah, right. that is, I can tell you, that is a tricky part for sure, people. Because I'm not sure, yeah, people catch so that. So score the one surface, right? Flip the glass over when you're trying to break it out. So Yeah. And then flip it back to score this way. Yeah, yeah it doesn't matter yeah, it doesn't then matter, where you relief, which so. side you see. I mean, but you yeah. do have to break it on whatever side you've scored it on when you start going that, that's after this. Right. Yeah. So... Like I said, you can just kind of, I was doing it like, sometimes people will do this. And, and like he said, he'll come in, not at an angle because he doesn't do that, but he'll come in and stop before he gets there. Sometimes I start here and go back that way just so I know I didn't, you know, violate that circle. So then I'm not sure, you know, I mean, so there, this is, you know, just not quite as clean as what he did, but... Still, all in all, it's it scored a nice circle, yep. and then it's just you have to do a little work to get it out of here. But 
Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I think the uh, especially the smaller you go, the more of a challenge it is to get them to break out cleanly. But even that, I mean, but, that's pretty know. good, right? I mean, if you're a fuser out there, I mean, yeah, that you, you don't need to do anything else to that. Really. Right, right. And if you're a stained glass person, you know, you might grind a tiny couple mm -hmm. of little tiny spots, but not enough to even, I mean... Anyways, if you're used to cutting uh, circles by hand, you know how much time you spend at a grinder trying to make that look round, and, and you can see how much uh, quicker yeah, and easier Yeah, that truly is are, the one so. advantage. Even if you have to hit those little <clears throat> couple points on the grinder, yeah, oh, yeah. that's like that's, way, and I don't know, for anybody who's ground circles, I mean, it, you never, it, they're always off, yeah. you know, by the time you try to grind too much, and it, it does never look right. So. so here's a couple other circle cutters that we want to show you. These are made by a German company, um, Bowl, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it's B O H L E. A silver snit is how well they refer to these, this line of um, glass cutters. And so these are pretty much the same. You'll notice this one's a little bit newer, it just looks shinier. This is one we've had in the classroom for a while. The, the only difference between these two cutters is the cutting heads. So this one is like the, one of the last ones we showed you where there's a variety of cutting heads or cutting wheels on that one head. So as something wears out, you can loosen up a screw, rotate that over, get a fresh uh, cutting wheel. The cutting wheel on this is just regular steel, not a carbide steel like, like a lot of our glass cutters are used to. So this particular one uh, by Silversmith, the difference is the cutting head. You'll see that first the cutting head's on a turret, so it turns 360 degrees, which the advantage to that is when you're doing a circle, the cutting head is more likely to turn with you and the wheel rolls more than it wants to drag. You know, again, that's sometimes the issue when we're doing really small circles is that the cutting head drags more than, than the, it really rolls, if that makes sense. And that's um, the, the main difference between the two? Yeah, and then this is and a, and a carbide steel um, wheel. And the price is oh, different. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a little difference in price. Uh -huh. So, yeah, um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure on top of the current pricing on all these, but... But uh, this one is certainly a little is more expensive. The one with the, with this nice turret on there yeah. is more expensive than this one. And again, what you're paying for is the cutting head. And I know Val and I were talking about this when we said we were going to talk about circles. I mean, this is the advice I give to customers when they walk in the door and they ask me about circle cutters. I always ask them, well, how many do you think you're going to cut? I mean, if you're going to cut a lot of circles, it, it's you know it's worth uh, the little extra. What happened? Oh, <laughs> it's worth. Excuse me a minute. Well, I guess Val's done talking. She lost her microphone. So. Um, oh, my back on. Well, I'm sorry. Well, these are you, new. Because you clipped it in such a someone, way. Oh, someone weird bought spot. me these weird ones. <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. I think, okay. Now she's good. I don't know. No. No, that's I feel good. like, okay. This is kind of what sorry. we do. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. sorry but it, I didn't people. look behind the scenes of what they're missing before right. we go. Oh, I was going to thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry, folks. That was probably loud, too. Was it? I don't, I don't know. It I wasn't loud to me, but. Okay. Sorry, so, now what were you saying? <laughs> what I was saying was, <laughs> what I, so usually when I talk to, to customers about is, but how many circles do you think you're going to make? I mean, if you're, you plan on making lots of circles, it's really worth the investment in buying some of the little bit nicer and more expensive circle cutters because it is easier. Don't, yeah. you, don't you agree? The ones that are a little bit more Definitely. expensive it's are, are The easier. one that's the most expensive is truly the sweetest one to use. Yeah. I mean, it really is is slick. But like, like he said, if you're not going to just do circle after circle after circle, I mean, I'm not opposed to just doing sure. them by hand, you yeah. know? I mean, tracing around, I usually trace something, but put something and trace around a bowl or a cup or something, and then I'll just do it in maybe two or three cuts, and, you know, once again, two or three points that I might have to grind a little bit, but, I mean, circles overall aren't that hard to cut. I mean, it's just, you know, what you have left behind that you have to deal with in terms yeah, of a grinder the, or grinding whatever. or trying to shape them up. So both of these cutters, uh, one of the great advantages to them is this end here, which attaches to the glass. So this is a suction cup. So if you set it on the glass and flip this little lever, um, it sticks, that is nice it sticks right to the yeah. glass, right? So, so again, we don't have to worry about stabilizing this part of the cutter. I only have to worry about applying pressure. So uh, this one's the same deal. You just want to make sure this part's clean. You want to make sure the glass is clean, obviously. And then... Um, Again, like I said, that just sticks right to the glass, which makes it pretty nice. So, so we adjust, I know this is probably really hard to see, but um, the sizes are on here. This is the um, English version, uh, and the metric is on the side. So you can rotate this if you want to know what the, um, you know, if you're using centimeters or, or millimeters. But it does give you the diameter of the circle, so not, not the radius, in case you're wondering. But 
And we will be sure in the comment section once the video is over to link um, to our circle cutter section on our website for you all yeah. to be able to Good. browse That's the right. options. That's right. So um, one of the things about this one is, so there's a little knurled nut here, I guess, that we just loosen up and then you slide this where you want to do it. And I find sometimes, I don't know if you've experienced this, but if I just tighten it with my finger, sometimes I don't find right, that it's tight, not, tight enough. It's not tight enough. And then when I'm doing a circle, it will move on me. So I, what I often just do is... Um, I use my, my breaker grozer pliers and I come in and grab that and uh, just give it a, just a little tiny, t you don't have to yeah. like, you know, no, go crazy, it, but, just, handle, a little but tiny. Just, just tighten it up just a little bit. I think it, it helps. And then usually I have to loosen it up the same way. So once I put it on, I'm always, hey, I have no idea what, I thought I was making a, sorry, I thought I was making the right size circle for this piece of glass, but apparently I didn't, so. What size are you going to do? Well, I was going to do a nine-inch circle and on this twelve-inch piece of glass, but apparently I was, I was reading the number on the wrong side of the, of the circle cutter. So I was reading the number in here, which was not a smart idea. So, anyways, now I'm back to what I was. Yeah, saying you could say sometimes. Remember how we used to do that too with some of those other that weren't so good. So set it yeah. for what you think. Or if I've got it, oh, just gosh, a yeah, mold. Yeah, that's a great idea. Just a mold where I don't even really know what size it is. You know, I will. Um, Kind of turn it upside down, draw the mold, and then I will start messing with the the measurement, and yeah. I'll just keep rolling it on a piece of paper. You know, as soon as I set it, and I think it's like nine and a half inches, I'll I'll go ahead and put it down, trace it, or do it on a piece of paper, put the indent in it, and then I can actually measure. Yeah, I was going to show it real quick. Yeah. Right? So you oh, know, okay. If you can follow what she's talking about, I've done this many times too. So just grab a, a, a piece of paper and come around with the uh, circle cutter. I know it might be hard to see. It's it's pretty subtle, I think, but you, you can you see where we're um, indenting into the paper. And then you can just take your ruler and measure it, and and sometimes you might find that to be a little bit more accurate, or, or mm -hmm. at least I know for me, it's a kind of reassuring that oh yeah, I'm cutting that the right size. Because as Val did make a point, I mean, if you're trying to cut like an even number, nine inch, eight inch, that's pretty easy. But if you're trying to cut like eight and three eighths of an yeah. inch. Not so easy sometimes to see the little markings to and the mold to get sometimes aren't quite what they say they are. I mean, there is a, oh, yeah, a totally. variable in you know if it's a ten inch circle mold of some kind, it might not really be. It might be more like nine and three quarters or ten and a quarter or you know what I mean. The actual opening. So sometimes it's kind of nice. I've even cut it out before. Oh, on that and yeah, on put the, it on my mold or something. Just yeah, to that sure. helps. Yeah. So I have this one. I. I uh, attached you can see i have attached to the glass uh, as i mentioned earlier i always do one quick spin around just to make sure i'm staying away from the edge well enough but also for this reason here yeah this is that, the one that um, you'll catch I mean, this something is, this gets me at, at home all the time in my work studio right i mean who i mean i always have stuff like sitting all over my workbench and and there's nothing worse than getting into a circle and then you run into some tool that you had left there or your your water bottle or whatever you have right. going on right so so do one quick kind of run to see what's going on and then um then I, i'm ready to score it so i'm gonna start here Come around, same sort of deal. And flip it up, right? It just just pops off. Uh, so you want to use this? Yeah, let me see. I'll Let's use the rubber mat that. this time. So I'm going to come around again. I scored this side. I'm flipping it over. Going to use the running pliers to try to get this. Now the rubber mat sometimes doesn't have as much of a give as the stacks of paper. That's one of the advantages to the you know using stacks of paper is you can kind of control the give, but Again, on the paper side, I actually stacked the paper too high one time, and there was too much, too much give. And then when I pushed on it, it just, you know, the scored and just shot wherever it wanted to go and didn't really follow the, um... oh, see, there you go. So um, you can But like I said, this happens a yeah, lot. Yeah, this so happens, it's right? Not, I mean, it's nothing that we would go, oh, gosh, we got to redo yeah, and I wouldn't it. Stop, no, it's, right? it'll I mean, be fine. I mean, I might as well just keep going. Yep. So I'm just running around. I uh, okay, lost it here. And I'll just keep going as far as I can go until either it, it runs into um, the other spot, which it just did, or it, sometimes it'll just run back off the glass. Mm -hmm. But like that little three-inch one that Val did earlier, I mean, that happens. You know, it's just part of it. So, um, oh, well, I was just going to run this out of the way. That over. Crystal's yeah. asking, do you not oil your cutter wheel? Oh, my gosh. Ooh, wow. Yeah, you know, so. Um, no. We, we don't. <laughs> um, Val and I, we, we don't use any oil uh, for any Cut any type of glass Anything. cutting. And yeah. I know people do, and we're not, uh, you know, I mean, people put, we don't even put oil in our cutters. Uh, we don't dip our, we don't dip the cutters into oil. Uh, it's, um, 
uh, perhaps it's a good thing. Maybe we. Well, I don't know. We yeah, just. We just I mean, it. we sell it. We sell the cutters that that have chambers for oil. It's just, you know, I think that we believe that with the carbide that the cutters are these days and things. I mean, they don't rust. They don't. Um, very. It's very hard to even dent them or anything. So yeah. I mean, so I think for us it was more the. Um, you know, to preserve the tool or to prevent rust and all that. But but then also when you get into some things like copper foil and you're doing a piece that has, you know, 1,300 pieces, you know, if I don't use oil in my cutter, I, I've reduced the time I have to wash those considerably. Yeah. You know, with oil, you've got to use some sort of a detergent or something to cut down the, the oil so that your foil will stick. And then the same thing holds true with our fusing. You know, if we are using oil in the cutters, then we have a kind of a lot, much more extensive cleaning process to get the oil off before we fuse it. We certainly wouldn't want oil residue fusing. No. And so, but it's not wrong. I mean, lots of people still use it and... Um, yep. But, but we just, we're lazy and we don't want to do the extra work. That's, that's what I tell people. I <laughs> yeah. mean, as Lays Val pointed out, I mean, I... Uh, taught myself how to cut glass many years ago and never used any oil and it wasn't until years later that someone said I needed oil and I was I couldn't understand why because I'd been cutting glass so um yeah so I don't think it makes sorry, a huge that, difference that was a long answer for well her, I know it's because you, you don't ever want to say yeah, it's wrong no, and you we don't, we don't wrong. that we disagree with we it just totally don't. we just don't we just don't so so now I'm going to cut this one out and if I can steal your cutter that doesn't have any oil in it I will um <laughs> come come in here. So I have one already relief score there, right? So I, I guess I don't even have to. Um, I don't have to do anything about that one. I'm going to come in again using the running players. Some of this is going to start to fall apart. Usually, by the time you get to the third one, then the glass just starts falling apart, right? So you can see how pieces just just fall off. And as um, and where it broke off, if you're you know familiar with glass, a lot of times you get that little bump, which we've seen several times, right? And so I would just come in with a pair of it's been scored, so I should be able to just pull it off without too much of a problem. I'll come in with a breaker grozer, just grab that glass, um, you know, pull that little piece off. Again, if I was fusing, I wouldn't even do anything else to this piece of glass. Right. Uh, this is one of the fused circle projects we've got over here. Yeah, this one's got, yeah, the, the other thing going on with this one, or you can tell them, Val, you, you made the piece, right? Oh, well, it does it. No, it's just, it does have some circles, right, so it's, that were cut out of glass. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then laid on the clear, but what really, what a lot of the circles are, are just the um, fiber paper that I put underneath. So it's, yeah, you might want to yeah, show the back. Yeah, you can see the dimension from in the back. If you can see the dimension in the back, like all these indentations are eighth inch or quarter inch fiber paper um, that was laid on the shelf. The glass was put on top and fused onto it. And then you can see the, you know, there's a blue circle, right, green, this um, amber amber and then there's actually a clear one here too another clear one that it's really hard subtle to see I don't maybe you can't see it see this slight Maybe. shift in the in the amber oh right mm -hmm. yeah do you see that mm -hmm. so there's another clear circle in there there's actually another one over here too there's a clear circle a small one about right there that's really hard to see mm -hmm. it just it's changing I don't know if you can see it in the blue but it's shifting the color a little bit of the blue that's a clear circle on top of the other circles but um, well, we thought that was kind of fun. I, I kind yeah, of like that. We we've never done a. Stuff. Have we ever done a fiber paper? No, we should. We have, oh, we should. That would oh, be fun. That is fun. Right. I do enjoy that. Good fiber paper projects. Well, if you have any more questions about any of the circle cutters, you know, I, Kaylee said she's going to be posting a link, but I mean, you can always message us on you know Facebook or Instagram. Uh -huh. I Sorry, I was reading it. <laughs> or you can always email us at facebook at delphiglass.com, and, and um, you know, even if the you think of something tomorrow, you're like, oh, I meant to ask this. I mean, get a hold of us. We're happy to uh, answer those questions. And if you have um, ideas for other th topics you would like us to cover, I mean, re reach out to us that way, too. Yep. Um, otherwise, yep. thanks, thanks for joining yep. us today. Thanks. We'll see you next time.